can you please explain why Russia chose to um, enter the nanotechnology area through Rusnano? I think I don't know the exact points of the people who took the decision, but I can imagine that it was something like this that, okay, we have a quite established basic sciences and we've heard a lot from the states about American nano initiative, from other countries, for example, Japan, about this nano initiative. And uh, of course, Russia was in the stage and still in the stage of of transformation, etc. And uh, I think the people who started to, to do such initiatives, they decided, let's do something new, something, something uh, new sound, right. at least, at least, yeah? And they, they, they decided that we will make uh, some kind of experiment because uh, commercializ uh, commercialization of scientific, scientific results, it is, it is not the best point of Russia. And they decided to make such experiment, and they decided to narrow topic and to take this uh, new topic and to start to do something with. Um, does Rusnano have the same vision of nanotechnology development with the world society, or is it a different one that you have from your perspective and your experience? I think generally we have more or less the same vision with the other countries. And uh, internally, for Rusnano, we have uh, five major priorities, major priority areas. First of all, it is energy efficiency and clean tech. Then it is nanoelectronic and optoelectronic. Then nanomaterials, also coatings. And the last, but not the least, it is uh, nanomedicine and pharmaceuticals. I think based on what you just said right now about the five different priority areas that you have within Rusnano, um, could you probably say which are, or estimate, which are the most marketable nanotechnology fields within Russia? Currently, currently, I think the most marketable area in principle in Russia, it is the coatings and nanomaterials. Because uh, Russia is a big country, we, we, have, we, have, we have a quite extensive, huge infrastructure. This infrastructure is uh, mainly made from this uh, basic materials like metals, concrete, etc. But also in Russia we have a quite uh, harsh climate, quite strong environmental conditions, etc. So all this in infrastructure, our buildings, roads, they are subject of quite strong influence of harsh environment. So corrosion, damage, degradation, etc. So to, to decrease such a unwanted processes. The easiest way to make a special program for coating of all these infrastructure objects, for example, bridges, roads, application of new materials, etc. So from the current point of view, I think from business point of view, current business point of view, the most business-oriented areas from coatings and nanomaterials. And finally, I think having heard so many interesting elements from you as part of this discussion, um, certainly does Ruslana have any capacity for collaborative investments that happen across the borders, maybe with companies that are based in other locations outside Russia? We currently have such a cross-border investment. We have uh, something like uh, more than uh, 10 companies in America to where we invested. Mainly these companies are related with uh, different types of electronics or IT business. And, mm, but, so we, we do not have any problems with the cross-border. Cross the requirements are similar. It should be nano-related or nano-enabled, and it should have some part of production in Russia. It's been an absolute pleasure having you as part of our Frost & Sullivan's Movers & Shakers interview. And certainly from all of us, uh, best of luck to Rosnano and certainly to yourselves in the years to come. Thank you.